and Jigar. The fastest, most direct way to grow spiritually is to pick a point way beyond yourself and to fix on that point and not to judge yourself for being short of that point, but to notice the gap between where you are and that point. So, for example, you say to yourself, I'm not going to get disturbed by anything anymore. Just a little point, a little bit beyond you, tiny. I'm not going to get disturbed by anything anymore. Nice point to pick. Certainly, we'd all like to be there. So why not pick a point that's worth reaching? And in order to play with that, because make it a game, it's not guilt, it's not heavy, it's not failure, it's a game. At first, like any other game, you better understand the terms, the rules. And so you question, what does it mean to get disturbed? When I say I'm not going to get disturbed by anything anymore. Well, that's fairly easy. In order to tune in to what you're not going to do anymore, you have to at least for a moment, albeit just a moment, notice what it looks like inside when you're not disturbed. Notice what it looks like inside when your mind is not being bothered by things, when your heart is not emoting with all kinds of emotions. And maybe you're watching a sunset, maybe you're taking a walk, maybe you're just quiet, just doing okay. You just look at that and you see that it's like a still lake inside of you. There's just not as much noise as there usually is. There's not as many vibrations going on inside of you. You can use whatever terminology you want, but you all know what I mean. We say it's quieter in there. Quieter in terms of noise? No. Not physical, auditory noise. Quieter meaning less action, less vibrations, less activity, less disturbance. If you have a lake and it's crystal clear, it's mirror clear, mirror still, you have no disturbance. You have no vibrations. You have no noise. Should something disturb that quiet, You get ripples, you get eddies, you get currents, you get waves, and so on. Whatever it is, to whatever degree the disturbance is, you get what I'll call noise where there was stillness. That is what it is like inside of you. It can get quiet in there. It can get still in there. It's not boring for it to be quiet or still. It's beautiful for it to be quiet and still. You feel a complete sense of overwhelming contentment and well-being. You can look at something while you're quiet and still, and it looks beautiful. It looks interesting. It looks exciting. Stillness permits the soul to reach through and touch this world. When there is disturbance inside of you, then all these energies I've been discussing start to generate currents and eddies and vrittis and vibrations. So now when you look out, the soul looks out into the world, it has to look through that veil that is now disturbed. And when it looks through that, the world looks disturbed. And eventually you'll catch on. That's all that's happening. The disturbances are inside of you. And when you look out, you project them. It's funny, it projects even a to action of a word. If I look through dark glasses, I'm not projecting darkness. I'm looking through dark glasses. It's just physics. If you look through a disturbed energy field, what you look at is going to be disturbed. That's why the yogis, the great scriptures, use this analogy of a mirror-clear lake. If you are looking at your reflection in a mirror-clear lake, It could be mirror clear, right? It could be a mirror of your reflection. You will see just what you look like. If I drop things in that lake and create currents and ripples and all kinds of noise, what does your reflection look like? Exactly, exactly the result of every single ripple and every single current is what is going to affect your reflection, isn't it? Where it dens down into a trough, 
you'll have a dent in your face. Or it flashes up into a wave, you'll be all disturbed, distorted that way. You will be distorted in exactly the way that the disturbances exist on what you're looking at. It is the same way with your energy body. When you look through this energy field, you don't have to do anything. It distorts what you're looking at, just like looking through crackled glass or anything else. There's nothing you can do about it. So the world looks disturbing, but not to yogi or the yogini. To the yogi or yogini knows the world is not disturbing. The world looks disturbing for the exact same reason that your image looks disturbing in that lake. And you either can go out and fix your image, good luck, you don't really want to be changing what you're looking at. You want to deal with the disturbance itself, which are these vibrational changes. Believe it or not, those vibrations, those distortions and disturbances in the energy field, they change your whole life. They change your whole world. That is, every single thing that's going on is going on inside of you in that energy field. There is no reason to deal with anything else. So when you say that you're going to set a point out there that says, I'm not going to get disturbed anymore, that's what you're saying. You're saying that my energy field inside is not going to get distorted and messed up anymore. And if it does not get distorted and messed up, I don't have to worry about the world because it is the cause of all disturbances in this world. It is what makes everything look disturbing and distorted and scary and everything. If it is clean and clear, you will see, you can look out and see beauty everywhere. The world is just the world. Don't know how many can reach that state, but you just get to a state where there will never be another time ever where when you look in this world and you don't see the world. You just see the world. You don't see good and bad and right and wrong and better and worse and, you know, wish it was and wish it wasn't. You see the world. When you look at a dog, you see a dog. You look at a cat, you see a cat. You look at a snake, you see a snake. When you look at the world, you see the world. The problem is because your energy field gets distorted, you don't see the world. You see the reflection of your energy field. And therefore, the world looks distorted in exactly accordance to your vibrations. And then what you do, which is so classic, is you go out to try to change the world to make it stop being distorted. (laughs) It makes me laugh to even talk about it. The world is not distorted. The world is the world. So to sit there and say, I'm not going to get disturbed anymore, you very quickly tune into what that means. That doesn't mean you're going to stop things from disturbing you. It means you're going to work with your energy field so it doesn't get distorted anymore, so it stays clear, all right? So you sit there and say, I'm not going to get disturbed anymore, and immediately the whole thing changes. It's so beautiful to watch. Now, once you catch on, you have no responsibility for what's going on outside of you in the sense that it's going to go on. You have not said, I'm going to change the outside. You said, I'm going to change the inside. And that's what it means to work with things that are beyond you. That's beyond you. But to most people, it's beyond you to say, I'm not going to change the outside. Because we're so afraid and affected by the outside that the thought of leaving it alone is a scary thought. But you've got to contemplate that a little bit, how it is that you can be afraid of life to where you can even let it be what it is. Be afraid of other people where you can't let them be who they are. And you just get to where I'm not going to be like that. Then your work with yourself is the beauty What am I going to do about the fact that even though I said I'm not going to get disturbed anymore between you, me, and the lamppost, I do. The energy does get disturbed. It does go through these changes. Well, that's where your real growth starts, is how to learn to work with your energies, how to learn to work with yourself while your energies are going through these changes. And it really is not hard. No matter how many times we talk about it, it just looks easier and easier every single time. You are not your energy field. You are the one that is aware of it. You are watching these energies go through changes. You don't believe it and you don't understand it, but if you would stop touching them, they will go away. If you can keep your hands to yourself, 
then when the world drops its leaves and its petals and its rocks into your lake, I want you to see your inner energy field as a lake. It's a lake of energy. The senses bring in the vibrational changes that happen outside, and they drop into that lake. As they drop into that lake, they create ripples, they make changes, they make an impression. Ramakrishna once said, anger to a saint is like riding on water. When you ride on water, it makes an impression, but the moment your finger moves, it's gone. That's how the senses should be affecting your life. They should make an impression. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see anything, right? The senses have to send the messages in, make an impression upon this energy field so that the consciousness is able to experience it. So you let it come in, it makes its impression, and if you were not to touch it, if you were just to leave it alone, it would be like riding on water. It would make an impression, and as soon as that impression is made so the consciousness can see it, it would disappear. It would just erase. It would be wiped out, just like that. Just natural process of clean slate constantly, yet there just enough to experience it and then be there for the next moment and the next moment and just keep experiencing these impressions, which are gone. If you keep your hands to yourself, this is what will happen. I've made a statement to you. If you do not keep your hands to yourself, then when it starts to make a ripple, you either want to stop that ripple or keep that ripple. And the moment you're playing around with it, you're going to get more than you bargained for. I I say, more you teach, the more you realize why all the ancient teachers use that lake. It's such a perfect example because water and energy are very close in their behavior patterns. And so now, if you're getting a ripple in that lake that crystal mirror clear lake and you don't want that ripple and your tendency is to touch it to make it go away or you like that ripple so your tendency is to grab it in order to keep it what's going to happen every single time you touch it you create much more disturbance won't you and it won't help you keep your ripple and it won't help you get rid of your ripple it'll just make a mess (laughs) it's as simple as it does all right you wouldn't even figure out where your ripple is anymore if you touch it enough will you either to get rid of it or to keep it and so now there's more ripples so you got to touch more and it just becomes a complete chaos inside that is the normal state of a human being it is chaos in there it is just one disturbance after the other and it just seems like a life of infinite disturbance it is only that way because you're touching it It is not the world creating those disturbances. It is not. The world is coming in and making the impression upon your lake and it's disappearing. But you're not letting it. (laughs) It's so cute once you get back far enough and watch this. You're either stopping it from making an impression because you can't handle it, or you're trying to keep the impression. Somebody was very nice to you, had a very nice experience. You don't want it to go away. And so you try to cling to it, to hold on to it, or to push it away. This is the cause of disturbance. It is not what other people say to you. It is not what other people do. It is not your finances. It is not your family. It is not anything like that. The cause of disturbances is these ripple effects that go on in your energy body. Since it is your energy body that is disturbance, that's what creates disturbance, and whatever is causing it to be disturbed is the cause of disturbance. And what is causing it to be disturbed is not this world. What is causing it to be disturbed is you. Now, that's a good thing because it means you're already free. It means you don't have to change everybody and everything else outside of you in order to come to a state of peace. You only have to work with yourself. It also means that you don't have to try to stop the disturbances from happening because, in truth, it is your effort to stop the disturbances that is making the disturbances. And you also don't have to try to keep things a certain way because it is your effort to try to keep them a certain way inside or outside that is causing disturbance. Now, right there, everyone's lost. It's too Zen, (laughs) okay? It's too much the Tao. People want to do something. They want to use their will. They want to have a technique. They want to have something that they can get their hands on that will make the disturbance go away. But it's such a paradox, Because it's the act of getting your hands on it 
that is creating the disturbance. So if you say to yourself, I don't want to be disturbed anymore, what you are saying to yourself is, I want to learn to sit inside without touching. That's what it means. People are so busy renouncing the outside. It has nothing to do with the outside. (laughs) You renounce the outside all you want. You're still stuck with the inside. If you learn to sit inside without touching, it will all go away. It will all go away. What does it mean to sit inside without touching? Again, it's not something that requires, you know, six, ten hours of meditation a day for, you know, three-week retreats. It has nothing to do with that. Ultimately, that helps a great deal, don't get me wrong. But that's not what it has to do with. What it has to do with something very, very real. It has to do with, now that we understand this process of disturbance, you understand what gets disturbed, you understand what it means to not be disturbed, you understand what is causing the disturbance, the dynamics of the world coming in, making its impression, as it should, making its impression upon the lake and creating a certain amount of ripples, which will then go away. All right? That's not the cause of disturbance. You are the cause of disturbance. Your touching is the cause of disturbance. So now, if you want to end disturbance, if you want to not have any more disturbance anymore, your work is... When the world comes into the senses, makes the impression upon your energy field, your energy body, and it begins its little ripples, its little vibrations, and then you see this tendency. It's so subtle. Maybe only meditators can see it. I don't know. All right? But you will see it. You will see the tendency for your consciousness, for your being, for you who's watching, to touch the tendency to do something about it, the tendency to get involved, the tendency to engage, the tendency, in truth, it's only two words, the tendency to resist or to cling. You're either trying to push it away or you're trying to keep it from going away. You feel this as an impulse, as a drive, as an urge, as some sort of an energy attraction toward the vibration. Have you felt that? Can you see that? Until you sit there all day seeing that tendency, you can't get out. If it's only something you see like once in a blue moon, oh, isn't that interesting? What do you think is going on the rest of the time? The rest of the time you're getting involved in it and you're creating the disturbances. And then you sit down to, you know, to, for your 10 minutes meditation and you say, well, it's really too disturbed in here. Well, I'll bet it is. Okay, you've sat there and built up quite a storm. <laughs> Ever get yourself really going? <laughs> you drive yourself crazy. You just keep touching the stupid thing. You keep making more thoughts and keep having more emotions. The thoughts create emotions. The emotions create thoughts. The thoughts create emotions. And it starts bouncing off and you've got this whole hurricane going on in there on top of your little lake. Can you get tornadoes in there? Ever had a tornado in there and a nice still lake? How about 10 of them at once? You can make quite a mess in there. You're doing that. The world is not doing that. If you were to leave it alone, no matter what's going on, it would just come in and dissipate. It would come in and it would be like, remember, I want you to remember certain things on this talk. You see, the talk's not just analogies. You will find, if you listen, that during the course of your everyday life, you will see these things real. Your inner energy field is to be looked at as a lake that can vibrate and have things touch it and make vibrations. This concept of riding on water, you let things in, you let them make the impression they need to make, but then they're gone. And you're going to see they will go, except that you can't leave them alone. And I want the work to be at that place where you feel the tendency to get involved. So the first thing is I can sit there and talk to you about what should I do if I'm sitting there and I feel this tendency to be involved. But what's the purpose of talking about that if you're not sitting there? Your job is to get conscious enough, because that's what it's about, consciousness, to get conscious enough to see that things come in, they make these impressions. Most of them it's fine, but periodically there's this tendency to touch. This tendency to evolve. To touch what? To touch the person outside? It has nothing to do with the outside. When you're getting somewhere, you will see the tendency to touch is to touch the vibration that got made inside. That's what you're trying to touch. You're trying to get involved in this vibration that is either bothering you 
or enticing you. And if it is bothering you, you're trying to keep it away from you. I think I told you once before, you'll watch carefully what you'll see literally is happening is these vibrations, they start on the outer edge, which is where the lake starts. And just like vibrations in a lake go down deeper than just the surface, these vibrations are reaching down, trying to go pass through you. And what will happen is as they go towards your chakras, and it could be any of the chakras, mostly I always talk about the heart, because that's the easiest one to work with, as they move in towards your energy centers, if you don't like that vibration, you will feel tremendous resistance to let that thing get near to your heart. You do not want it to come in close to that center. It's almost like there's a vortex there, and it's pulling the thing in, and you then push it away. And you'll see eventually, actually, your touching is literally an attempt to keep that vibration from going into your heart center, from going in there. And so the act of pushing it away from a chakra is something I'd love for you to visualize and see that these energies are coming in and you're holding them away all internally. You can feel it. You do resist this stuff. And so the energy vibrations try to come in and you push them away. Or they touching your heart and you like them, so you hold on to them. So that's literally what's happening. You've got to be conscious enough to be there now. What do you do if you see the tendency to touch? It was a trick question I got you, because if you do the work to be conscious and be there so that you're aware that you feel this tendency to go down and touch those energies, you did about 99.9% of the work. My part's easy. (laughs) Because once you're there, it means you've already transcended the energy. If those energies are so overwhelming to you, you're not even there. The minute they happen, you got sucked in. You don't even know where you are. You're just fighting with the energies. The moment you get conscious enough to where you can actually watch these energies start to come, my job's easy. What do you do if you feel the tendency to reach out and touch someone? You do the exact same thing that if you're trying to stop smoking. If you're a smoker or an eater or whatever it is, you feel this tendency to pick up a cigarette. You feel this tendency to have a snack. You feel the tendency to do something, a habit you're trying to break. When you feel the tendency to pick up the cigarette, It's a drive, it's an urge, it's an energy movement that wants to do itself. You just don't do it. You just don't pick up the cigarette. If you are sitting inside and you feel this tendency to touch the energies that have come in, you simply don't do it. It's just exactly the same act of will that keeps you from picking up the cigarette is the act of will that permits you to remain in yourself instead of going out to meet these energies. You do not leave the self. You do not go out to meet the energies. I'm serious. I'm talking to you very seriously. How do you not leave the self? The energies are interacting with each other, almost magnetically, and it's tending to pull you into it. To do so, you must leave your seat of consciousness. You must leave the self. You must lean forward and engage is a key word. You have to engage and get involved. If the moment you feel the urge to touch and get involved with these energies that are vibrating inside of you now, you lean back inside. You can lean back outside if you want. It's okay. Helps a little bit, all right? But really, it's inside. You fall back, relax, and fall away from the energies. Now you're getting conscious when you can feel the energies Notice yourself and then get a concept of toward versus away. One movement will move you toward those energies. If you fall the, ah, here, I'll do it this way. When you feel the tendency to go toward the energies, go in the opposite direction of which the energies are pulling you. Like maybe some people don't know what it means to go backwards or fall behind. Go in the opposite direction of what the energies are pulling you. Relax first, though. Don't tense while they're pulling you because then you'll be pulling them with you, (laughs) all right? You have to literally relax your heart, relax yourself, the very part that's trying to get pulled. You relax it, and then you lean away from the pull. There. That is your spiritual growth. If you make it to that moment where you're conscious when that's going on, then every single moment of your life you are going to God. That's how you go to God. As surely as walking upstairs takes you upstairs, if you go step by step up each stair, if every time these energies pull you toward them, either because you're trying to stop them or you're trying to cling to them, 
I just want that energetic tendency to get drawn toward the vritti, toward this energy movement. You just instantaneously relax your shoulders, relax your chest, relax your whole inner being and fall backwards. That's it. If you do that, you will not touch those energies. You will not. They will stay as long as they need to stay, but you are not exacerbating them. And you know, it doesn't seem like it, but it will quiet down. Not instantaneously. It doesn't have to be like that. Something was wrong, these energies. You didn't aggravate them. Like, let's say you, you had a, a scab, something on your, your arm or your finger, and you kept picking at it, and so it never healed. And somebody said to you, I know how to heal it. They said, how? It's a deep yogic technique. Be conscious first. Okay, I will. For three weeks. Guaranteed. Be very, very conscious, all right, of what? Of this tendency to touch it. You'll feel this tendency, this urge every once in a while to touch it and pick at it. Yes. Don't. Okay. Okay, then magic will happen. Just by donning? <laughs> but what was I supposed to do? That was just a don't. All right? Just by donting. Don't do it. Don't touch it. Don't go with that tendency. I'm not even telling you don't touch it. I had nothing about touching it. Just don't go with the tendency to touch it. And what will happen? It will heal. Because you're not exacerbating it. It is the same thing with your inner state. It didn't heal today. It didn't heal in one hour, did it? You didn't see any difference right away. But it will heal, won't it? It is that way with your inner state. If you stop touching it, it will come to rest will happen gradually if every single time you feel that draw toward those energies you relax and release it will happen now what you've done is very great you've permitted the world to go about its business therefore it's not disturbing you you're not disturbing it you've permitted the world to come in through your senses and to drop its leaves and pebbles into the lake of your energy. You have no choice. The world is free to be the world. It's none of your business. I mean, how ill must you be to be born onto this planet and not being able to handle the planet the way it was when you were born on it? That the only way I'm going to be okay is if everything changes. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay? Why can't you handle the planet? Right? You'll have plenty of opportunity to deal with it. It's in front of you but you have to be able to handle it. So you leave the environment alone, basically. It is what it is. It then comes in. God forbid you should leave it alone. It's going to come in and drop its little pebbles into your lake because that's what it does. That's what the senses do. You didn't cut off your senses. You didn't cut off the environment. Wow, so far you're pretty free. The environment's free and you're free. Your senses are free and you're free. And the pebbles in the lake are free, right? Everybody leaves them alone. Now the trouble starts. Because you're going to see that's where the trouble is. The soul couldn't care less about what's going on out there. And the soul couldn't care less about the senses. The soul is very close to that lake. The soul sees itself reflected in that lake. It's Narcissus. It got lost. It lost itself in the reflection of your energy field. Are you listening to me? That's what's happening. And when those vibrations come in through your senses and drop their vibrations, their energy, pebbles, into your energy field and it vibrates in accordance to that, that's what you care about. That's what you're resisting. That's what you're clinging to. That's what you're involved in. So the tendency for the soul to be drawn into those vibrations is all you have to work with. You don't have to work with anything else. That's where it's all happening. And when those vibrations take place, if you fall away from them, back behind them, you're not touching them, you're not disturbing them. And if you don't disturb them, eventually they will not disturb you. Right? You just have some leftover work to do for the mess you already made. So you fall back. If every single time, every single time, people can't hear that either, every single time, you relax and release. It will happen very, very quickly. 
if something happens that's bigger than what you thought you were able to relax or release through, yoga has a technique for that too. Ready? Relax and release through it anyway. <laughs> that's the advanced technique. <laughs> Only for people that manage to get past the first stage. You get to the next stage. Until eventually, that's all you're doing is relaxing and releasing away from the tendency to touch. Now you may think, and I won't get into it big, you may think that if you do that, your life will fall apart. No, your life will come together. Relationships, your finances, everything will be healthier, whatever that means. You don't know what it would have been otherwise, but you will be more in harmony with your dharma in those things if you are not creating disturbances for you to distort your interaction with them. You'll be clear enough to interact with them at the highest level that is meant to be. That's all I can answer you. You'd like me to say, oh, you'll get rich and you'll get married and all these wonderful things will happen and no one will ever get sick and lions will lay down with lambs. I'm not going to say that to you. (laughs) I'm not going to say that. I was very careful where I picked my words. Here's the words. If you do this, everything in your life will be to the highest possible place it should be and could be in accordance to what is. So if you were supposed to be going through difficult financial times, instead of it being a complete mess, it will be some difficult financial times that you're at peace with. If it's a relationship and you're attracted to somebody or repulsed by somebody or something's happening, changing... It's not that it won't happen. The world goes on. It's not like some magic that's supposed to make it be the way you want it to be. It just is what it is. And the fact that you're in harmony with it takes the edge off of it. In other words, it won't bother you anymore. (laughs) That's all I can tell you, all right? And that's got to be the highest it can be if nothing's bothering you anymore, no matter what it's doing. And so you don't get afraid that if you fall back behind it, your life will fall apart. Your life will not fall apart. It will not. Your life will come together. It will come into a harmony. And to fall back behind it does not mean you don't interact with the world. It means you don't touch the vibrations that are coming in. You can interact with the world perfectly well without trying to manipulate those vibrations. There's no problem with it. You just interact with the world. The truth is you can interact better with the world without creating disturbance. So it becomes very, very simple If you set out in front of yourself that I'm going to live a life without disturbance, you can't do it. It's not something you can do. But you can work with that which I talked about. You can sit back behind yourself and not permit yourself to get sucked into the vibrations when they come in. It takes practice. But as you do it, without knowing what happened, eventually you will be living a life without disturbance. You won't be able to answer how it happened. You won't be able to say when it happened. It isn't like something touched you and all your disturbances go away. It's very much like that little boo-boo on your finger or arm got healed. When did it actually go away? (laughs) I I don't know. It, It was so gradual, it was so natural, that the only thing you didn't do anymore was touch it. And it healed. That is what is going to happen inside of you if you don't touch those vibrations. You will start to have a life without disturbance. What does it mean to have a life without disturbance? It means the world will unfold. You feel no responsibility for it. You feel no blame. You feel no guilt. You feel no pride, no shame. No pride and no shame. It's just unfolding. It's not even personal. You don't even feel personal. How about... If you never took anything personal again for the rest of your life, the world was unfolding and you were sitting there. That's the start of living a life without disturbance. Does that mean you're cold and detached? No. It's the opposite. Because when the world comes in, it doesn't have all this interference. You feel it at a much deeper level. Your heart gets moved with everything that happens. You feel greater joys and greater sorrows and greater everything. But it just last while it lasts. And therefore, you're not afraid of it. 
One thing that happens when you live a life of no disturbance is there is no fear. I'm talking deep yoga here, natural deep yoga. Why would there be no fear? What you're afraid of is those vibrations. You're not afraid of this world. You're afraid that some vibration is going to get in there that you can't handle. You take anything you think you're afraid of and then magically make believe that for some reason, when it happened, it caused a nice vibration inside of you. We'll play opposite that and tell me whether you're still afraid of it. And you say, no. Then take the thing you're least afraid of right now and make it so that when it happens, the worst vibration goes on inside that you've ever felt and tell me whether you're afraid of it. Prove my point, <laughs> right? What you care about is those energy movements inside. You become fearless, completely fearless, when you are no longer touching those energies. Once you have realized those energies cannot touch you, they just go through the little right on water stuff. How could you be afraid of that which is like riding on water? I'm going to write this really mean, nasty thing, but I'm going to do it on water with my finger. Think you can handle it? <laughs> I think I can handle it. <laughs> I'm not even sure I know what you wrote. Okay? That is what it's like inside of you. It doesn't matter what comes in. And it doesn't matter what it writes. Because you're not touching it, it is like riding on water. Therefore, over time, not at once, but over time, you become fearless. You won't know when it happened. You will not be able to put your finger on it. But you'll just notice that the world can go about its business and there's nothing inside that's resisting. There's nothing inside that's clinging. There's nothing inside resisting. There's nothing inside that's afraid. Because you realize all that the world can do is ride on your water. Okay? That's all it can do is ride on your water. Unless you touch it. Then you start to get the mess. Do you all understand that? There is nothing more empowering than what I just told you. The only thing the world can do is ride on your water. It can't hurt you unless you resist. And if you go in there and start messing with it, resisting or clinging, it creates hurricanes and tornadoes and all kinds of very interesting things. But then it's under your control, isn't it? Completely, 100%. You get to decide. That's very empowering. So your fearlessness comes from understanding the only thing that can disturb me is if I touch it. I ain't touching it. And you have the right to say that, don't you? You're in there. And all you have to do is fall away from the tendency to touch. People think things like jealousy and fear and anxiety and self-consciousness and embarrassment and insecurity that you can't really get rid of these things. You can just learn to live with them. That is not true. What is happening is you're really holding them at bay and that's why they don't go away. If every time they move, you relax and fall back behind them really and don't think it's right to have them or somebody's doing something wrong or just literally you just sit there and say, no, I Everything's fine to be. I'm just going to relax and fall back behind them. But you do it at the level I'm talking about. It's going to go away. It will go away. Everything will go away. So your transformation becomes every moment of every day if you do something, like I said, which is to pick something that's beyond yourself. I'm not going to have any disturbances anymore. And then you do what I said. But you have to do it from a deep level. Now, you may say to me, I can't stay at that level to even make that decision. I just, it's not quiet enough. If that's true, then that's probably why they invented meditation. Because meditation will teach you to be quiet enough during your everyday life to where you can make that decision. I always leave it up to you to decide what practices you're going to do. I ain't giving you no practice. Never have. Probably never will. <laughs> All right? Why? Because I'd rather give you the understanding of why you would want to use practices. Now do you understand where you need to sit? Then go there. You're capable of sitting there. It's, it's not like I don't have that place inside of me. Yes, you do. <laughs> I can guarantee you. If you're in there, you're in there. Therefore, you have the ability to sit there without touching. If you don't have the ability, it's for two reasons. Either you don't want, you really do want to touch, and you're just coming out here because it's pretty. All right, and then you're, you're free to do it. You're welcome to do it. Or you're not managing to stay conscious enough to make the decision. You're saying, well, I always notice afterwards that I should have not touched. Then meditate. 
do yoga because it will give you inner strength to become conscious sooner. But I don't think that's the game. I think the game is no matter where you sit in the side, the moment you see the energy move and start to pull on you, you have to let go right then at that second. There isn't any time for procrastination. There isn't any time for I'll do it a little bit later. You have to just right then let go. And I think you can do that. I know you can do that. And if you do that, you won't say to me, well, I wasn't there till I came back. There's always a moment where you see what's going on. You just waited too long. You got to do it right away. The minute you feel the energy starts to shift, you're going to get used to what it feels like. You just let go right then. You don't play around. Don't push it away. Just relax and release. Let it do what it wants. This is a lot of fun. I think it's the most exciting journey. I know it is. The most exciting journey that anyone could ever take. This journey beyond. To work on these things. Mm, Jagrative.